question here about, you know, the new DC and uh, where's Mark Guggenheim? Check it out. Hey, John Crew, this is Weston. I just read a quote from Deadline uh, quoting Mark Guggenheim, the creator of the Arrowverse, saying that he was pretty disappointed about uh, not getting a call from Peter Safran and James Gunn about the new DCU. And I, that quote was very curious to me just because the TV and, and movie side of things have always been very clearly separated. Um, I was curious what you guys' thoughts on that were. Um, thanks. Have a great one. All right, man. Thanks a lot for sending that in, Weston. And yeah, Mark Guggenheim, I mean, one of the creators of the Arrowverse, I... There are aspects of the Arrowverse I loved, and there was a period of time where I just loved the Arrowverse in general. You know, Arrow was firing on all cylinders, Flash was getting up and going, they were doing these great annual crossovers. I, I, I mean, I never really got into Supergirl, obviously, and, and but I love Black Lightning, and, and so, yeah, I mean, he, he did something, he was one of the creators of what I think for a period of time was really one of the defining moments of superhero content on television, the Arrowverse. We'll always talk about the Arrowverse, even though it's it's drawing its final breaths now, it's almost done. I, I think it was, at the end of the day, hit or miss, love it or hate it. At the end of the day, the Arrowverse was a successful venture. You know, there, there are issues with the Arrowverse I didn't like, obviously, stuff like that, but at the end of the day, overall, when we step back, say, five years from now, ten years from now, look back at the era of the Arrowverse, we got to say the Arrowverse was a successful venture, man. And a lot of people enjoyed it a lot. Awesome. And Mark Guggenheim was one of the reasons behind that. Now, as James Gunn and Peter Safran took over DC, everybody knew it was going to go in a different direction. The Arrowverse was already, you know, it's not like Peter Safran and James Gunn were going to be the ones pulling the plug on the Arrowverse. The Arrowverse was already naturally starting to come to its end of life cycle, right? It's, it's almost done. And everybody knew that. And Arrowverse was always very, very separate from the movie world, other than that one little Ezra, where it, when uh, Ezra Miller popped up in uh, Crisis right. on Infinite mm -hmm. Earth. So other than that one little thing, they always kept it very, very distinct. Line. It was very different. The series, the Arrowverse franchise had run its course. It's in its closing days, all that kind of stuff. So apparently, James Gunn and Peter Safran, who then came in to take over DC, uh, they took some meetings, they talked to some people, and one of the people they did not talk to was Mark Guggenheim, which, to be honest with you, I would have been quite surprised to find out if they did. Because I, I don't really see what Mark Guggenheim... Again, I think the Arrowverse is a successful venture, and that's how it will be remembered, but there's there's clearly not a place for for any of that moving forward with DC. So I would have been surprised to find out that there was a meeting. Well... Mark Guggenheim indeed was not given a meeting, and I guess he didn't like that he was not given the meeting and decided to do what people today seem to do, pull out their soapbox, stand on it, and complain to the public. Um, when this happened, this comes to us from Deadline. We write the following, Guggenheim was one of the creators of Crisis on Infinite Earths, a CW crossover event that brought together DC shows like Arrow, The Flash, Supergirl, Batwoman, and Legends of Tomorrow. By the way, Legends of Tomorrow was pretty good for the first few seasons too. Uh, making such a feat happen was no easy task, and the writer felt gutted that his efforts were not taken into consideration by the new DC studio heads for at least a meeting with them. And let's go to my screen for a second if you got a chance, Jonathan. Not a job, uh, mind you. Not a job. Oh, I think that's... Yeah, uh, I, think I think what happened was... It, yeah, let me try to... Yeah, it got delayed there a bit. Uh, but anyway, I'll keep going here. Not here a go. job, mind you. A meeting, a conversation, a small recognition of what I tried to contribute to the grand tapestry that is the DC universe. I'd only spent nine years toiling in that vineyard after all, Guggenheim wrote on his legal dispatch newsletter uh, dated February 3rd. He added, although working for DC had been creatively fulfilling... It involved a lot of adversity, challenges, and personal sacrifices, none of which seemed to have occurred any professional benefit. Simply put, the Arrowverse hadn't led to any other gigs, so it feels, at least on a career level, that I really wasted my time. All right. <laughs> Listen. Every once in a while, we all get a little butthurt. We all do. All of us do. I have, you have, everybody has. Never we all but. Except for Ray. All of us get a little butthurt now and again. And clearly Mark Guggenheim feels a little butthurt that, hey, you know, I did this. I, I would challenge Mark on a couple of things, though. That professionally, you just wasted your time. Do you know how many people in Hollywood would kill 
a family member what? to say that they were able to have a television well-known franchise that ran for pretty much nine years like a distant cousin or a grandma i i'm maybe a close sister oh my god oh, like i mean Damn. Wow. i mean a sociopath there are people who Hayden, work, if you're watching please don't <laughs> who please don't work and toil and bust their asses and sacrifice and do all that and never so much as get a pilot in front of a television network dude you were one of the architects of the arrowverse you had a a franchise given a platform for nine years you were the chosen one you were the chosen <laughs> i had the high ground i mean to sit there now in front of an audience of people who have never gotten one tenth the opportunity that you've had and say I just wasted my time. Really? Really? If we go back to Mark Guggenheim, the starving college student dreaming about being a television executive or TV writer and saying one day, hey, you're going to hit it and you're going to get like a nine year franchise on television. And it's not everybody's going to love it, but it's going to have a, a passionate following. People go, you don't think that the college student Mark Guggenheim eating ramen noodles and all that kind of stuff wouldn't have been thrilled to find out. You did not waste your time, dude. Wait, what's his net worth? I'm looking this up. I want to what's know about waste of time yeah. here. <laughs> I mean, listen, man, do not sell yourself short. You did something in the world of entertainment that very, very small percentage of anybody who's trying to get into this industry will ever come close to accomplishing. What you accomplish should not be sold short by anybody else, and it should not be sold short by you. You had a terrific thing of success. And listen, you might be right. Maybe that great thing of success does not directly lead into anything else. Maybe yes, maybe no. But listen, Guggenheim's a young dude. He's got a lot of years to develop a lot of different things. And believe me, he may not feel right now that his Arrowverse work is going to get him anything else. But I guarantee you, the fact that his name is Mark Guggenheim and that he was one of the co-creators of the Arrowverse, he's going to get a lot of meetings in the years to come that otherwise he wouldn't have had. Apparently he's worth $188 million. I think he can buy meetings if he wants. Them. I think, I think for you to look into the face of the public and say, I just wasted my time for nine years as I sip my cognac or I don't know what, I don't drink alcohol. What's an expensive alcohol? That sounds expensive. Expensive champagne. He's a quarter of a billionaire. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. So I, I don't think it was a waste of time, Mark. I think he did. Okay. Now look, this will again, bring up the, the question about should he have gotten a meeting? I, honestly, I don't think so. And that's not disrespectful to Mark Guggenheim, your Arrowverse, which will always have a legacy really has no real connective tissue to what DC is going to be moving forward. That doesn't take away anything that you've already done and accomplished. It's just that this is clearly something extremely different. And frankly, a meeting with James Gunn and Peter Safran at this time just would have been a waste of Mark Guggenheim's time. I, I, I really don't see how he was owed anything other than the hundreds of millions of dollars <laughs> that he has secured and collected over the years. So, I, I, again, I just think Mark Guggenheim is selling himself short. I think he's selling his own accomplishments short. I think he can look back at what he has done with a great amount of pride. I think he can look back at his bank account now and feel very, very happy. And in the years to come, when he gets meetings and people will hear his pitches because he is Mark Guggenheim, I think he'll realize in the years to come his time on the Arrowverse was not time wasted. Whether And guess what? Whether or not your time was wasted on the Arrowverse for nine years is not defined by whether or not you got a meeting with James Gunn and Peter Safran. So I get it. We all get a little butthurt sometimes. I, I just don't think the place to do it was, I'm going to get on a public forum and express my unhappiness about this. I don't know. It, that's me. We want to take a second to thank a sponsor of this video, 
Mint Mobile. If saving more and spending less is one of your top goals for 2023, why are you still paying insane amounts of money every month for your phone bill? Switching to Mint Mobile is the easiest way to save this year. As the first company to sell premium wireless service online only, Mint Mobile lets you order from home and save a ton with phone plans starting at just 15 bucks a month. You guys know I made the switch over to Mint Mobile a while ago. The process couldn't have been easier and I can't believe that I am spending less than a third of what I was spending on one of the other major carriers before. By going online only and eliminating the traditional costs of retail, Mint Mobile passes the significant savings on to you. All plans come with unlimited talk, text, and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and switch easily in minutes with eSIM. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door free, go to mintmobile.com slash campia that's mintmobile.com slash campia cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash campia anyway chris <laughs> you read about this do you, th- do you think Mark's got a point, though, maybe? Or, or how do you think he should look at his own body of work? I do think this cut does come down a bit to the problem with sound bites, right? Because I understand if you're one of the creators of the Arrowverse, you'd probably like to have a meeting with somebody. This isn't the best phrase, though, is it? Of talking about how all of this meant nothing, yada, yada, the nine years spent there. Because, yeah, he, he was the one who came up with the crisis crossover and everything, which was really, really well done, in my opinion. So I can understand it stinging a little bit, especially because I think everyone kind of just attributes all of this to Berlanti. Yeah, Berlanti and, gets a lot of the credit. And he Berlanti's really had some talks and things, right? So I can understand that level of frustration. That being said, you know, the Arrowverse for many years was one of the most popular bits of television. Those shows were really, really shining and they had hit a really good groove for a while and were doing really, really well. I feel like the better course of action here, if they had a a nice nice little uh, PR person running things, maybe would have been, it is disappointing to have not had a meeting yet with everyone at DC, but hopefully, given my track record, I'm on to you know, greener pastures or something of that nature. Right. I understand sometimes in the heat of a moment, we're not always going to be the best versions of ourselves and say exactly what we should say, but it does come across a little bit of underselling oneself and underselling the, you know, the popularity that the Arrowverse did have for a while. All right, guys, question is for you. What do you think about this? Listen, I, I think Mark Guggenheim should absolutely look back at what he accomplished with a great deal of pride. And I think he's selling himself short when he's accomplished. And I don't think taking a meeting with anybody is a reflection of that or the importance of the work he's done. I don't know. How do you guys feel about it? I mean, after all, I mean, Berlanti seems to be getting meetings and pitches and, and new prospects. I don't know. Maybe that's rubbing him the wrong way a little bit. Maybe it would for all of us. I don't know. Whatever you guys think about that, jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts.